Good morning. It is the 25th of May, Thursday. Um, all of the main ribs are now prepped and ready to be riveted onto the main and rear spar. Uh, I'm going to be approaching pretty cautiously as I go about this to make sure that I follow the rivet plan accurately. Uh, I don't want to make any mistakes in this section, especially I don't want to make any mistakes when it comes to riveting to the main spar because that's not a place that I want to be uh, drilling out uh, any of those long um, 1 8 inch rivets. Um, one thing that I will be doing to these ribs that may seem a little bit out of sequence is that um, these little tabs right here are going to fit under the flange of the rear spar and uh, they will kind of be impossible to dimple later on. So I'm going to go ahead, just these little tabs right here, uh, final size drill them uh, to number 40 and dimple those before this uh, gets attached to the rear spar. Um, other than that, um, we'll see how far we get today. Um, I'm, my goal is to build both wings at the same time, um, but I think that I'm gonna get one wing um, skeleton sort of assembled and then hung up on the racks before I start trying to do the other one. So. Uh, anyways, that's it. Thursday, the 25th of May. Uh, let's get after it. So I learned a couple of things um, while building this yesterday, and I'll, I'll be sure to point them out here. Uh, there's a little bit of shuffling because all of those spars are on one long shelf. So trying to work my way out to get that. You see that I put a little gap between the tables so that I can use a clamp to hold the flange of that um, of that main spar to keep it from tipping. First thing I learned uh, here as I'm clecoing the assembly together, which is what the plans say to do, cleco it and then rivet it. Uh, don't cleco all of it. Um, you, you definitely get into some tight spaces, especially on the far end down there when you get into the wing walk and you have several um, close together. There are a total of six six, count them, rivets that you can hit with the squeezer on the main spar. <laughs> That's it. Uh, you're bucking all of those and you're doing it with a double offset um, set, uh, which is that long um, rivet set with kind of two bends in it. You can see because you have to rivet, um, you have to put the factory head on the flange side of the rib and you can gently bend those flanges out of the way, but not so much that you can use the shorter uh, rivet set. And this is one of the things I learned right here. You'll see me at a certain point flipping this assembly back and forth um, from one side to the other. Right now, what you see me doing is some ribs, I have to rivet, uh, hold the rivet gun with my right hand, some of them with my left hand. And uh, when it comes to doing flush rivets on the skins, I'm pretty ambidextrous, but these are fairly difficult to set. And I was not getting good results um, setting those rivets, um, putting the rivet gun in my left hand. So what I learned was don't, you don't need to, to clico all of the ribs on before you start riveting. There's really no point. Um, you can see that the flanges of these ribs face different directions. Some of them face left, some of them face right, which means that you hold the rivet gun with a different hand for whichever one you're working on. Just do one side. If you're, if you're like me and these are difficult to set um, ambidextrously, do one side of them, flip the wing over, do the other side of them. I said in the beginning of this video, I didn't want to make any mistakes and I didn't make any mistakes with the rivet plan, but I did have um, a handful of rivets that just didn't set right. And I had a difficult time getting them. Uh, and the, the problem uh, is tipping rivets. Um, I'll put a picture up here of what that looks like. So. Uh, what you see me doing right here is going back and forth. Oh, there you see, I'm breaking out the gear to remove rivets. And I think that I had a total of eight, maybe, uh, rivets that I had to remove and reset. T 
today I'm going to do the the right wing, and uh, I will follow my own advice, and I'm only going to do. Um, I'm going to only Clico in the ribs that face one direction, do all those, Clico in the next ones, do all those, and um, hopefully have less trouble. Also, really importantly, toward us on the um, the outboard end of the wing, the rivets there are an AN474-5 or 6. There's a tip rivet right there, and you see what I'm talking about. And it's actually these specific rivets. They're really like a half of a rivet length rivet length too long so when i reset the there i think there were three that i had to get rid of there um those are really hard to buck without tipping them over if they're too long um and so what i did was took some needle nose pliers and grabbed a rivet took it over to the scotch bright wheel and just made it a little bit shorter kind of split the difference between i th i think it's a six um, and it'd be better off as a five, five and a half. So that's what I did. That worked out great. Um, you got to hold those rivets when you're at the scotch Bright wheel. You got to hold them uh, with a pair of pliers because they get really hot really fast um, on the grinder. So, yep, finishing up the riveting of the main spar here. This turned out to be a really long pro project um, process of riveting this spar uh mostly because of the rivets that i had to redo um had i not had to to redo those rivets that probably cost me an hour and a half at least um but it's it's done um i think that there were of the eight i think rivets that i replaced probably half of them were technically acceptable but i i feel better that i just removed and replaced them uh, the rear spar is much simpler but this is another um, notable point on the rear spar um, you've you've probably heard me or other builders say that as you move along in the build the plans become less explicit and this is a great example of that ordinarily if there are holes that you are supposed to leave open for later the plans will say um, leave these open, you know, they'll be explicit about it. In this example though, um, when you're reading the rivet plan, there are some rivet lengths that don't make sense. And it's because there is a, um, aileron gap fairing and a flap brace that will eventually be mounted to that rear spar. Um, so basically every single rib along that rear spar, there is one hole that needs to be open. That one hole is not in the same position, but it's not called out in the plans. You just have to kind of take note um, and then read ahead in the plans and find out that those other pieces get attached much, much later. Anyways, I, I didn't screw it up, but it's just worth noting. Um, pay careful attention to the rivet plan, especially in this example, because the the rivet key or legend, um, the symbology for the two different sizes of rivets, the ones that um, aren't attached to the aileron flap gap flare fairing and the ones that are, are very similar. Um, and if you're looking at it quickly, you could assume that all four of those symbols were the same, uh, but there's one that's not like the other and it's not very different. Um, let's see. Okay, so it's all riveted together. Um, super stoked about that. Um, you might notice at some point that there are still a couple of Clicos in this thing because um, very um, the end nearest to us, the outboard end, that last rib, you don't rivet it to the main spar yet because that one gets riveted in conjunction with the leading edge rib. So that's the only one that you don't rivet to the main spar. Um, this is a clever little trick with the two by fours that I saw on the Plain Lady channel um, to hang the the wings to work on them um what i'm doing here is fabricating a little piece of angle and fitting it to that outboard rib uh, with three sixteenths screws so that there's a an actual hanger or mounting point uh so that it can hang on the wing stands which we're moving over to next um 
that's not really precision, it's not super precision work, but I do want it to lay flush. So there's a little bit of measuring so that the extended portion uh, of that hanger is almost like an extension of the spar itself, meaning that the if the spar were to continue running, um, it would be flush with where that ends. So I got it all hung. I spent a lot of time on the far end over there trying to figure out how to clamp that thing down and there wasn't really a way to get a clamp in there so what i ended up doing was drilling a couple of more holes in the top of that angle and just dropping a couple of 3 16 screws in like pins so anyways that's it for episode 50 uh today i'll build the right wing and i'll tell you how it goes tomorrow thanks for watching